Now, we've been getting some errors on purpose or unintentionally and kind of glazed over them. I want to talk a little bit about error handling and things like that because functions are primarily where you deal with errors a lot. Although you might do things like this by accident and you'll get an error where you can't add a string to a number, most of the times that this kind of error happens is inside of a function where your types get messed up, where you're adding the wrong things or something's nil and you didn't mean it to. And so we're going to cover that first because I think it's really important to understand how you do error handling in the Lua way of doing it. So first, that error was something when the code ran and it had a type error at runtimes. That's what's called a runtime exception or a runtime error. There are other ones where you do parsing errors when I go like a print yo, but instead of rinse I do this. And so Roblox tried to warn me by underlining red, I ignored it and ran anyway. And then it got a parse error, right? And that's, that's another type of error. Parse errors are really hard to catch because they're in the code that's writing. It's not actually run, but there are certain ways to catch it. We'll show in a future video. But most of those are in functions. So let's go back to our add function of A and a B and return A plus B. And we'll go, the result is add one and two and print out the result. And a normal function that's happy will give you the result back, but it won't give anything back if you mess up the types, change that two to a cow. So it's gonna to try to add one in cow. And so you'll notice we've got a add number to a string, doesn't really work, we don't know what's going on. And it says exactly where the error occurred, in this case, function add. So instead of lines like we've seen the errors in the past, it actually tells you what function had the problem and what line in the function. So when we click it, since the function only has one line, it's right there, but it would normally say like add colon and then some number. We can see the error happened here. There's ways of capturing those errors so your entire code doesn't break. And it's, it's a special other keyword or magical function called pcall. So it means protected function call. So this is unprotected, it's dangerous. It could blow up at any minute and this print would never run. As you saw, our print never ran because it couldn't get a result because it blew up. So we're gonna do p call. We're gonna do it slightly different here. We're gonna print first. So if you go p call, p call is expecting two important things. The first is what function are you calling? Everything after that, it's expecting the arguments that you wanna to send to that function. So think of it like, hey, p call, I want you to call this function and give it a one and a two. So p call is like, all right, the first is a function you're calling. Everything after add, any arguments you send me or parameters, I'm gonna go ahead and grab those and then call in with those numbers. And if it explodes, I'll let you know. If it doesn't explode, I'll also let you know. And I'll just give you your data back that it returned. So let's go ahead and call it with normal good stuff and watch what happens. Cool, it's a true in three. Very interesting, Where's it, what is this true? So although there's no comma there, it looks like two different return values from P call. And that's normally what pcall sends you. It actually sends you two values, which I'll name here. The first is success. Was the function successful or not? Success means did it throw an error or not? It doesn't mean that you didn't add something incorrectly. It just means that the function did not explode. So success is what that means. The second return value is either the result or the error. <laughs> so it's, it's one or the other. This could be one or the other. You only know if it's one or the other based on if success is true or false. So let me go ahead and print those out and you can see. Success, and we'll print out success, and then results or the error. So we'll go ahead and print this out with good values. So success was true and the result or the error was three. So if you add one and two together, we get three. So it worked and the result was three. But if we do cow and run it, Success is gonna be false, and the result or the error is gonna be an error, and it's gonna tell you why it failed. So if you click on that, it'll take us to this of what that particular one is. So notice here we're adding the function. We're not actually invoking the function. We're just passing the function and letting pcall do it for us. Here's the function I want you to call. Here's the arguments to give it, if any. You don't have to give it any. And it'll safely call it. Notice that if we go down here, done, that this protected call is kind of nice because it can run our function and then keep going. The code will keep going. It won't stop your entire script just because it exploded, okay? So that's what pcall is really cool for, calling 
functions with a protected call or protected way and then capturing whether it worked or not and then the result if it did or the error if it failed. And again, we're only doing two here, but you could have multiple return values after this if you had to.